Monday, April 1st, 2024, Maneco 64, Home of Alternative Economics, and Contrarian Views. So the U.S. national debt is set to double in eight years. In the U.S., unfortunately, the Treasury and the Fed are adopting banana republic policies, yes. And it's not surprising, though. Looking back since the inception of the Federal Reserve in 1913, and I would also say uh, looking back at 1963 and what happened to President Kennedy, yeah, America's uh, reputation as a bastion of stability and sound money has been uh, chipped away and I think it's accelerating now. And uh, unfortunately, it's not just going to affect the United States. It's going to affect the whole world because since World War II, America has led the way. So it led the way in, in good ways, a uh, good path. But now it's leading the way in a bad path, in my opinion. And it's one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, what we're seeing uh, in the price of gold. And we will see soon, in my opinion, in the price of silver. And we'll come to that in a minute. But before uh, we do, just wanted to thank you for another uh, month <laughs> uh, where we saw the subscriber uh, count grow quite a bit. Maybe not as much as it should, but it's still good. So if you do enjoy my videos and haven't subscribed, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure uh, you hit the little notification bell to be notified of all uh, my new videos. And if you want to help the channel, there's uh, several ways you can do it. And it's all below in the description of all my, my videos. So back to uh, Banana Republic uh, policies. And I want to go back in history a little bit to talk about where the term comes from. Well, it comes from the Banana Wars. And those were uh, wars that uh, the U.S., yeah, small wars in Central America and the Caribbean, after the uh, Spanish-American War uh, to uh, help stabilize these uh, countries in Central America and the Caribbean and also maybe Latin America and South America. They were very unstable politically, monetarily, of course. Uh, there's a lot of inflation, corruption, uh, an oligarchy ran all of these countries and uh, American fruit companies, uh, they, they had a lot of investments in, the, in these countries. So there's a lot of instability. So the U.S. under the Monroe Doctrine uh, excuse intervened uh, for many years in these countries. And that's how they became known as banana republics and the banana wars. And Guatemala is a good example of this. The United uh, Fruit Company was heavily involved. And it wasn't just banana. It was all other uh, crops like sugarcane, tobacco <laughs> uh, in Cuba. And, and the, the term um, spread to South America as Brazil and Argentina became very unstable in the 20th century politically, economically. Um, they had several currencies so, yeah, they were the banana republics, while uh, the gringo, <laughs> North America, was a haven of stability, of sound money, up until 1971. Uh, but now, uh, it looks like, uh, unfortunately, uh, North America is going the way of the banana republics, and I would say the UK as well is going the way of a banana kingdom, <laughs> if you want to call it banana Republic you can and so is the rest of the West in my opinion and why is that well because we've become just like those old regimes in Central uh, America the Caribbean South America we have a lot of corruption 
a lot of instability, a lot of inflation. Uh, the corruption, of course, is widespread. I don't have to tell you about it. I, I think 2008 was a, a, a big uh, reason why we've fallen into banana republic dom. <laughs> uh, we could have chosen to allow all the, the bankers, irresponsible bankers, uh, with their trillions or even quadrillions in derivatives fail. And we could have cleaned it up and we could have uh, tried them. And if found guilty, we should have put them in jail just like uh, Iceland did. But we didn't. We chose the Banana Republic way. And now uh, this is where we are. And uh, I remember really well back in the 80s in Brazil while I was still living there. I was born in Brazil in 1964. And I didn't know as much about money and markets then. I was only a teenager or just started going to university. But I, I remember uh, at my golf club in, in Rio, everyone talking about the, uh, the over, <laughs> the over. And that was all to do with the overnight rate. So the wealthy people in Brazil, they thought... They were clever and they were getting 8, 10 or whatever percent overnight. And that's not annualized per day. Uh, and, and that market, now that I look back, is a banana republic fiscal and monetary policy. Uh, thank God my, my dad didn't buy into that. I think he was a contrarian like me. He had his savings and uh, his wealth outside Brazil, uh, denominated in dollars, and I think he did okay. But these people were fooled into thinking that they were getting rich by getting 8 or 10% every day in a currency that was going to collapse. <laughs> uh, there are a few currency collapses in Brazil throughout the 80s. Um, so The reason I wanted to talk about this is because I saw this recently on, on X or on Twitter from a guy called Craig Shapiro, and I thought it was really interesting. Uh, so I'm going to read it to you. I issuing more T-bills at an accelerating pace is a precondition to becoming a banana republic. There you go. And uh, I could see if we get there. Uh, an overnight tea bill <laughs> coming coming soon. And why overnight? Well, because it's the shortest maturity and you can uh, keep interest costs down. But anyway, let's continue reading what Mr. Shapiro has to say. This is the type of thing you see uh, emerging markets do. Not the issue issuer of the world's reserve currency and neutral <laughs> reserve asset. Well, Unfortunately, it's become anything but neutral uh, uh, reserve asset, uh, the U.S. dollar. But let's continue. If you believe that the Fed's primary goal is smooth market functioning for the U.S. Treasury market rather than their dual mandate of maximum employment and price stability, you can be begin to understand why Powell is so keen on starting a rate-cutting cycle Soon, despite the fact that the, the data we are seeing suggests current monetary policy is not restrictive enough to return inflation to 2%. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the Federal Reserve is there not to uh, help, you know, not for its dual mandate, but more to keep uh, the banking system afloat. And he's right, because... Prior to 1913, we'd seen a lot of banking crises, and a lot of times uh, people like J.P. Morgan uh, and others came to the rescue, and they had enough after 1907. They had to find a way to stabilize their reckless uh, speculation and reckless lending on the back of the taxpayer, and uh, that's what the Fed's for. This uh, dual mandate is just like a to disguise this, it's just a cover. 
Anyway, he says, in the fiscal dominance regime, the central bank is forced to lower rates to help fund the government deficits. Given the dysfunction in D.C., where both tax increases and spending cuts are off the table, as the CBO projects, 5 to 7% deficits for the next couple uh, decades, the only real lever to pull is to lower interest rates on government borrowings uh, as the government continues to shift uh, borrowings to the front end. And this is where it's interesting. He, he agrees with me. Uh, it seems like gold is already starting to sniff out this dynamic as a cutting of interest rates to support government borrowings will lead to currency weakness and higher inflation over time. So he's got a little chart here. So you can see uh, the dark blue line is U.S. Treasury issuance of T-bills. T-bills are um, basically treasuries that are less than a year in maturity, so very short term. You've got one month, three month, six month, and uh, one year T-bills. The notes are anything from two to uh, 10 years, and the bonds are any bonds more than 10 years. Um, so you can see that uh, prior to the 08 crisis, uh, there's a, it was quite steady. You know, the quantity didn't really move. Uh, but notice how since 2022, the amount of uh, T-bills has gone through the roof in relationship to the uh, notes and bonds. Yes, uh, after 2020, uh, T-bills, notes and bonds both increased. But uh, look at the chasm now. Rates keep going up. They're going to have to refinance a lot of the bills higher and higher. So it's a really dangerous game right now. Uh, they seem to think it will work, but uh, it's getting worse. And why is that? Well, because as Zero Hedge uh, reports here, Hartnet uh, U.S. interest to hit $1.6 trillion by year end, making it the largest U.S. government outlay. So I think it reached a trillion, uh, the interest... Uh, interest uh, that the government has to pay to investors in late 2023 and it's gonna hit 1.6 I think by the end of the fiscal year uh, and if you look at this chart here of interest payments US Treasury interest payments 12 month cumulative uh, you can see that it's just really taken off <laughs> since what happened in 2020 um, up until even uh, 2018, it, it was never above 500 billion, and now it's going through the roof. And what that's gonna do, it's that's gonna pile on uh, the debt because the US is gonna have to borrow even more, <laughs> not just to uh, pay for programs and spending, but also for the interest outlay so it's getting crazy. That's why I said, yeah, the, the debt's expected to double from $20 trillion in September 2017 to $40 trillion by the second half of next year. Yes, uh, it's crazy what's going on. We know now that uh, the debt is increasing a trillion every 100 days. And the problem here is if uh, even if the Fed uh, is able and the Treasury, if they're able to keep yields and interest rates around four or five percent, this is going to get worse. There could be a, a time when investors really lose faith and interest rates start rising again, even if they rise slowly to five and a half, six or even seven. That will make this even worse. And I'm not even talking about the de-dollarization here. That's also not helping where foreign countries, especially like uh, China, Russia and others, are decreasing the amount of uh, treasuries that they buy. That that puts a lot of pressure, downward pressure on prices and upward pressure on yields. So, yeah, that's where we are. And, and I think uh, the UK, 
uh, the whole of Europe, Western Europe is going to follow this. And that's why we are on our way to, uh, yeah, banana republic status. And I have to say, unfortunately, it's not just uh, monetarily and economically, it's also socially and politically. I mean, you just have to look at what's going out there, going on out there in, in the US and the UK, uh, and all the other countries in terms of politics. And uh, I mean, here in the UK, we've had like, four prime ministers in the last five, six years, which is unheard of. It's more like Italy back in the uh, 80s and 90s. You had a prime minister every month or so. Um, and that's that's another symptom there of uh, Banana Republic. So with that, let's quickly look at the markets then. Uh, Europe is closed, but uh, the futures markets are open. It's 8.30 a.m. London time. Uh, yesterday, someone asked me, uh, what do you think is going to happen on the open for gold? And I said, it's difficult to tell. But uh, I said, if I had to bet, I'd say it's going to continue higher. And I'm not trying to brag here, but we are higher right now. Uh, gold is at 2261. It's up $27 or 1.22%. And I just wanted to quickly show you a chart here, a daily chart. And you can see that uh, on March 22nd, uh, gold uh, bottomed basically around 2150. And ever since then, it's been going up pretty much in a straight line. Why is that significant? Well, I think it's because uh, on March 23rd, that was the day they passed this 1.2 trillion package uh, uh, and uh, in Congress. A funding bill and uh, I think people realize then well there's no hope <laughs> it doesn't matter what party is in power they're gonna keep spending right so I, I just want to show you that so the high overnight has been 2266 the low has been uh, 223370 uh, silver is up uh, about 1.2 percent as well we're at 2525 up 28 cents the high has been 31 Low has been 24.91. And uh, the stock market also is going up. Uh, isn't that a sign that the economy is doing well? I don't think so. It's a sign that the currency is going down the drain and people want anything but the currency. But anyway, uh, the Dow is approaching 40,000. We're about 40 points below that, up 184 points. The NASDAQ is 136 points higher, and the S&P is up 27 points. So stock market doing really well. The currencies are actually really quiet. So just to give a, an update for my UK viewers, uh, we've got the price of gold in pounds at 1792. <laughs> uh, yes, which is really, uh, well, I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised how quickly it's moving. Uh, what about crude oil? Well, crude oil is up slightly, uh, just above 83. That's WTI, of course. Uh, Brent, as well, is up about 0.2, just below 87. High-grade copper is up half a percent at 407. Uh, platinum is up three bucks trading around 912 what about cocoa well oh, cocoa hasn't opened yet but it's uh it closed at 9400 last week and uh with that i'm gonna wish you all a very good day take care bye